Hey everybody, Dylan from On One here, and in this lesson, we're going to learn how to edit a landscape in five easy steps using On One Photo Raw. On One Photo Raw is the all-in-one editing solution for your photography, combining the best of Lightroom and Photoshop into a single application. From raw processing, creative effects filters, masking, layers, and much, much more, On One Photo Raw can improve and speed up your photography workflow while ensuring you're creating the images that you've been envisioning. Learn more about On One Photo Raw by heading over to our website at www.onone.com. And in the meantime, let's learn how to edit a landscape in five easy steps. Inside of Photo Raw, let's bring this landscape to life in five easy steps. And the first step whenever I'm editing landscapes is to crop and level to ensure that the horizon line is straight and that the composition is exactly what I'm going for. So to crop this image, I'm just gonna quickly hit C on my keyboard. C on the keyboard is gonna grab your crop tool, or you can head over here to your tool well on the left-hand side, and you can select the crop tool. Now I can see that my horizon line is a little bit crooked there. So let's head up to this level tool. We're just gonna select this option. We can then head down to the horizon. We'll drop down a point. We'll continue to hold down our mouse We'll drag across and ensure that the line we've created is snug against that horizon line. We'll just let go. And there we go. We've straightened out the horizon. Now, I don't think I'm going to crop in on the image. I think the composition is great as it is. So all I have to do now is just hit enter on my keyboard to apply that crop. From there, the next step is to develop the tone and color. Well, inside of On One Photo Raw 2024, we can actually use the Brilliance AI feature to automatically develop our tone for us and save us a lot of time in the editing room. So let's go into our Develop tab. We'll just use Brilliance AI here by selecting that little button right next to it. And you can see it's modified the look of our image. It's given it some contrast and it's dimmed down the sky a little bit to bring back some of those details, and it's taken away any of those blown out highlights within the scene. Now, with Brilliance AI, we can always adjust the tone and color if we need to by heading into this tone and color section. And I think the only thing I'm going to modify is this black slider. I think it's a little bit too intense there. So I'm just gonna leave my blacks at zero because we already have some contrast being incorporated. And then, the last thing inside of develop, I'm just going to change my camera profile from on one standard to on one landscape. The reason I like using on one landscape is it brightens up the midtones a little bit and it adds a little bit of contrast into the scene. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, I'm really digging it. It's taken that dull raw file and it's brought some life into it. The next step is to modify our scene with local adjustments. Now keep in mind that with Brilliance AI, it automatically creates local adjustments for specific regions within your image. So if I go down into this Brilliance AI local adjustments section, I can see I already have local adjustments for the sky and the water. And I can pull up on these sliders here that will dim down the sky a little bit more and bring in some detail. And I can also do the same thing to the water if I need to. Now I'm probably gonna leave these at around 30 or so, but I wanna create my own local adjustment to dim down this bottom foreground section so that the viewer's attention is placed more into the center area and the sky. So let's go into our local tab. I'll add an adjustment. I'll just rename this foreground darkening. So to darken up my foreground, a tool that I really like to use is the masking bug or my gradient mask tool. To grab that, I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard or I can head up here to my masking tools and it lives in this top tool modifier bar right here next to my masking brush. Just this little tool here, it's your masking bug. And I'm gonna choose my shape and I'm gonna choose a gradient. I can drop this down I can dim down that foreground a bit. 
Let's also add in just a little bit of contrast there. And we'll also pull up on the whites just to ensure things aren't dull or flat. So if we hit, hit the enable button here for our local adjustment, I'm really digging it just to again, make sure this foreground area isn't distracting to the viewer. After that, let's elevate the look of this landscape by bringing in an interesting sky using SkySwap AI. I'm just gonna go into this sky tab here. It's automatically going to detect the sky and mask it for me. So all I have to do now is choose which sky I want for the scene. Well, if we go to our category menu, one of my favorite categories is this Occudrone Marshmallow category. But as you can see, there's a ton of different categories that you can choose from to fit the image that you're adjusting. So we'll go into the Occudrone Marshmallow one. I'm gonna go into the Sky menu, and I really like this Marshmallow Sky 8. I think it fits the vibe of the scene, and these fluffy clouds work really well to create an interesting backdrop in my landscape. I'm just gonna head down to the bottom here and I'm going to disable this foreground lighting option so that I can leave this area a bit brighter because it is quite a bright landscape scene anyway. And the last step for this landscape is to style with effects. So let's go into the effects tab and the first filter I want to apply is a filter that brings in a bit of contrast and some haziness into the grass area within the landscape foreground. So I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add the glow filter and I'm gonna use one of my favorite styles in here, darker. Now I don't like what it's doing to the walkway or this backdrop or even the middle section, but I love what it's doing to the grassy areas. So let's go into our masking options and let's just invert the mask and that way we can use our masking brush, which you can grab by hitting B on your keyboard if it's not selected. I'm gonna switch my mode from erase to paint, and I'm just going to paint this in to the grassy regions within my foreground. So if I turn this up and on, I really love what it does to just bring in a bit more interest and contrast into that foreground section there. The last filter I'm going to apply is a vignette. And the reason I want to add on a vignette is because it can dim down these corners in the top and bottom and really just focus the viewer's attention into the central area, which is the main interest within our image. So within the vignette filter, let's just choose big softy. We'll lower the opacity. And if we turn this up and on, I'm really enjoying it, again, just to dim down those corners and focus the viewer's attention into this area where the walkway is leading the, the eyes into anyway. So let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view the original. We have the original and after in five easy steps. So that was how to edit a landscape in five easy steps Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.